Okay. So, uh, hello everybody. So, for uh, those of you that don't know me, my name is Laura. Uh, I'm a PhD student under the supervision of Tony uh, Lilievre and Jérôme Hénin uh, in France at the Ecole des Ponts. So, what I'm going to present right now, right now it's not completely my PhD work because the objective here is just to show you the adaptive multilevel splitting method because we wrote a tutorial for that. And I'm just going to show you uh, what is the method and uh, a small example that is used in the tutorial. Also, so I came from uh, an applied mathematics uh, lab, but I assure you, I have almost no equations. <laughs> So, what is the idea? So, this method, so this method was developed by two people uh, in France. I'm not going to say their name because I don't remember, of course. Um, and after that, so this method is, uh, the objective is to uh, sample uh, trajectories for rare events. Okay? And with it, obtain a probability. What is the probability? So, generally, when you have uh, a rare event, you generally have two metastable states, so this one and this one, and you will stay trapped here, and you want to see the probability from uh, getting out from the neighborhood of this first state to uh, uh, from the neighborhood going to, to the next state before coming back to the first one. Okay? That's it. So this event is rare because it's a metastable state, so generally you just come back and stay trapped here. Okay? Um, so, how does it work? So the first idea is that you need to define two regions, a region A and a region B. So A, a is the region uh, um, where you're going to get out from, and B is the region where you want to go. So this may seem strange, but with the example, it seems clear, more clear for you. But just to see how, how the method works. So, you need to define also a reaction coordinate. This reaction coordinate, the only thing you need is that. So, there is that, this little condition. You need to have a value of the reaction coordinate that I'm calling Z max that you need to pass to get to B. Okay? Why that? Because we're going to stop the, the algorithm when we pass this level. So, and you want to get, get inside B, so, yeah. So you start with uh, n number of replicas. So here I'm showing you five. So this, uh, these are just points in the neighborhood of A. And you have also another parameter that is going to seem a little strange right now. Uh, it's k. It's the minimum number of replicas you're going to kill at each iteration. So you start the replicas. Uh, you just run the simulation. And you stop when you enter A or B. So typically, you're going to enter A because you're just in the neighborhood of A. Then, what you're going to see, you're going to look at the value, the, the maximum value of the reaction coordinate that each trajectory reaches. And this value, you're going to call it uh, level of the replica. Okay? So, for, so here, I, I'm, I'm doing like a reaction coordinate, like just a linear one. So uh, I'm getting the value, this is the level of this replica here, this is the level of this replica, and so on. What are you going to do? So now we're going to use the parameter k. We're going to look at the two, project, uh, two uh, replicas of lower level. And you are going to set the killing level. So actually, if you look here, the killing level, it's the second order level. Okay? And you are going to kill everybody that is lower. Okay, you kill them, and then you are going to choose uh, randomly other two replicas that you are going to replicate. So what is the replication? You're just going to copy the replica, the, the trajectory, until this level, and then up to the first, so up to the first point that is just passed this level, okay, the that kill, and after that, you just run the trajectory normally, and you stop when you enter A or B. Uh, what's the point here in doing that? So you do that, you continue do it, doing that, and, and you stop after everybody passes this, this last level that's that next. 
So what's the point here? The point here is that we want to get the probability from starting from this set of points, get inside B before coming back to A. And why we are doing that? Because actually we can look at the probability of passing each ZQ level. So each iteration you have one ZQ level, right? And how many how many replicas pass at this level? Three over five. So we have an estimation of the probability to pass this level. It's three over five. That is equal to the number of replicas minus the number of replicas you kill it over the total number of replicas. Okay? And you have that for each iteration. So that's the probability for this level, zero. And you continue, you continue. And after that, you're going to have uh, a, total, a total probability that is just the product of all these little probabilities that you have. Okay? Is that clear? Okay, you can pop me for questions if you want. Okay, so, um, so this gives us the estimation of the probability with this method, ANS. And the idea is that we have a proof, a mathematical proof, that the, the estimated value of uh, this, sorry, the expected value of this estimation it's actually equal to the real probability. So there is a mathematical proof in that. And the important point is that this result is unbiased. So this means that you can uh, change the parameters of the algorithm and always obtain the good value. Okay? Uh, the only thing is going to change is actually the variance. I'm not going to talk a lot about that, but you can look at the reference that are uh, in the tutorial. So, the other point is that, so, you can ask me why we are trying to obtain a probability. What are you going to do with that? The idea is that with that we can obtain the transition time from A to B. So the idea is that we want to uh, we want to uh, calculate the time for this kind of trajectory. So, the transition time is going to be the time from the trajectory that came from B enter A, so stay trapped here, doing loops, and then come back to A, okay? So the time I, I need to calculate is the time between the first enter on A and the first enter on B. What I do is that I split this trajectory using uh, a level of the reaction coordinate, the same um, that I'm going to call uh, that mean. And what I'm going to do about that is that now I can have, so I'm going to split the trajectory. Uh, so here I have the loop, so one loop, second loop, and so on. And then I have this final trajectory from Z min to B. So the time is just going to be the number of loops times, the, sorry, uh, so yeah, the sum of the times of the loops uh, plus the time of the last trajectory. Yeah, that's one. The problem is that we don't know the number of loops we do. Yeah? Because if we have that, we can obtain like an estimation of the average value, and we just have to multiply by the number of loops, right? And this we can do with the probability. So the idea is that if every time I pass uh, here at this level, every time I pass here, I have two options, so two events, go to B or come back to A. So this is a Bernoulli law. The probability to go to B is B, the probability to come back to A is 1 minus B. And we know what is the time, the expected time yeah, that we have, the time we have to uh, wait until we see uh, the system going to B. It's just 1 over B, so the number of loops is just 1 over B minus 1. Simple as that. And this B, it's of course, of course it obtained it with AMS, also the time of the last trajectory. Uh, the secret in that is that you have to have a good uh, set of initial conditions. Why is that? Uh, the idea is that uh, when you are near B, so you, you're going to put that mean near, near A, sorry. And you're going to do a lot of loops here. At some point, you're going to reach an equilibrium, right? And if you look at the distribution,
solution of the first heating points of this line here. Okay, so the first heating points are the first points when we hit this line coming from A. So this is one point, not this one. Okay, uh, you're gonna reach a quasi-stationary distribution, and if you can have a set of initial conditions that it's distributing, distributed according to this distribution, what you're going to have, you're going to have the points in equilibrium, and then you can obtain this probability P using AMS. Okay. So the example in the tutorial is uh, the isomerization of aluminum detected, I think everybody knows it. Uh, to set A and B, so I think now it's going to be more clear, we just uh, we just use it, uh, two uh, ellipses that covers the, the wells of the, the free energy landscape. So this is A, and I want to go to B. And the reaction coordinate we use, it's actually a, um, a measure of the distance from these regions. So near here, if you look at DA, it's the, it's the distance from the two forces of the ellipse, and the same, the same for DB, for the ellipse B. And I told you that we stop everything when we pass the last level, the Z-max. The Z-max we are going to use is this one, really near B, okay? So now I'm going to pass to the hands-on part. So the idea is that you, to use this method, uh, you have to give uh, a set of first replicas, right? And and this small parameters. You have to say the number of replicas, you have to say the K, the number of replicas you're going to kill, and etc. And so uh, first time I started this work, uh, I had already an implementation that was first made by Chris Main. And uh, it was quite hard. So everything is done in TCF. And I wrote some other TCL and Bash scripts and C programs to make everything automatic. So you just have to provide two files and one input file that is really simple. So the files to provide. So the first one, it's this common NAMD configuration file, normal, that you're going to use to run trajectory with, to run MD with dial A. You just give this file without putting any run here. So here, don't put anything, right? And I'm using Colvar. Why am I using Colvar? To get the ammos. It's simple. So, and the other files you have to provide, this is important, uh, are actually definitions, uh, process definitions in TCL. And now this is done like in in every, each one of them in a, in a single file. So the first one, it's a, it's a process that calls AMS measure that is going to give you, that's going to give you the reaction coordinate. Zone that's going to return uh, minus one if you're inside A, one if you're in B and zero otherwise. And the proc called variables. Why this proc called variables exist? Because you're going to see that for this example, the only thing that it does is to return you P and Psi. So what is the point? The point is that if you have a difficult system, so a complex system, and you want to see the trajectories after, you can use different, different variables that you use it to set the reaction coordinate. So that's the idea. And we use cover for everything because it's practical. So, and this is the strange file that I said that it's the just input file for the script that I wrote that calls smart parallel that's going to run everything in parallel. And it's just simple, it just it's just a bash script actually that you just need to provide the value for a few uh, variables. Okay, so that's the tutorial. You can download it if you want, of course. So together with Chris. Uh, we wrote this tutorial, and uh, the idea is that, so we have three sections. The first one is the calculation of the probability uh, from one point. So we have, we start all the replicas from the same point that is the neighborhood 
in the neighborhood of A, and we obtain the probability. The second is the transition time. So the transition time gets, uh, you need you need more more computational time for it. So I, I provide you some uh, example results. And the last one is an interesting one, the, the calculation of the flux of reaction trajectory that you can do using the trajectories obtained with this method to obtain some uh, cute figures like this one. <laughs> and the idea is that, uh, so this one is starting from the point that is here, so you can see that the preferable path from, from the neighborhood of A until B is different from this one. This one is from equilibrium. Okay, uh, so I'm gonna, I have to thank Chris, because we're the tutorial, Tony, and Jerome, my supervisors. And for those of you that were convinced that the method is cool, uh, good luck. And I'm here to answer your questions if you have. Thank you. Any questions? This means I was really clear or nobody understood anything. <laughs> <laughs> what, what is the option? Oh. Um, so uh, <clears throat> is, is this similar or, or is it very different from weighted ensemble? Okay, so the, the difference from uh, this method and weighted ensemble is that um, so we have the same kind of idea. It's actually more close to for flux sampling. But within the sample, we have this, you separate this space in beans, right? And you, you go to the beans, and then you're going to copy. You have weights to the trajectories. Okay. okay. Uh, the difference is that, you, first of all, you have to define the beans. You have like adapted versions, but you have to make the definition of the beans, and you have to stop at a time. Right? You stop all the trajectories when you reach a time. And this is a parameter that is difficult to choose. Uh, the difference with AMS is that so you divide the space using this Z means these levels of the reaction coordinate. First of all, that you don't have to give it because this is made on the fly. And the second point is that you don't have this uh, time problem, this parameter problem, because you stop everything when you enter A or B. You know? So it's more natural, like the way of stopping. So we have, it's a method that have like less parameters. And the third point, uh, are you recording this? <laughs> Weight and sample, they have no real mathematical proof that it works. You have proofs like numerical ones. And the difference in AMS is that everything is said, like mathematically. And you cannot do something stupid with, with it, because if you ask me, ah, can I do that? I'm going to tell you. It's not going to work because this doesn't work, because we, we did a proof and it's going to kill the one of the properties, so it's not going to work. No. So you said uh, Z kill is determined on the fly? Yeah, Z kill is determined on the fly because the Z kill is determined on the fly because it's the K uh, ordered uh, level of the replicas you run it. No? So, yeah. Uh, have to return on that point. Yeah, that point. So, so uh, this depends on this depends on this parameter, but actually every time you, you run the trajectory, is that then you're going to set the levels of the trajectories, and the z q is always the k the k is for the red one. So here I chose k equals two, so I'm going to get so this is the first level, this is the second, so z q is going to be this one. That's why. And actually, you you have the probability to pass that Q. So that's the level that is being used to separate your space. So that's the same idea for for sampling, but it, they are not fixed. So is there a so is this a, a enhanced sampling method? Like uh, um, in the sense, 
is there a bias to push it forward? Like, what if it doesn't get no. to be? What if it never no. gets to be? What if it doesn't close yeah. to the pain? The idea is that you generally go, because, so you go, you are going to reach B uh, quicker than you would if you did like just uh, Monte Carlo. No, just you just win the simulation because. Doing that, you're going to kill everybody that is in a region that it's harder to pass. You know? So That's the idea. It's a selectivity process. So you are favoring the, the, the simulations that go to the right uh, Yeah. So yeah, at the, at the end, you're going to have, to have this branching trajectories. Oh, so that they are spawned from the ones that pass the selectivity filter? They are what? Uh, you will create new trajectories from the ones that pass. Yeah, the from the ones that, that that pass it. You're going you're going to, to just eliminate them and copy to other ones okay. to stay with the same number of trajectories all the time. But, but yeah. There's an assumption that uh, one of the replica will cross that particular uh, like whatever Z kill or Z. There is some kind of assumption that it is, it will cross. No, you don't because have the, the well is, no, no, actually you don't have the, uh, ah, you have the assumption the well that is, it will cross. If the well is very steep, I, it might be like, it might stay there for way longer and... So, actually, so, yeah, you write that, okay, so the idea is that, uh, uh, so when you, when you have that kill, everybody passes this level, like the other trajectories pass it. And you were and you were sure that the other two pass it also the new ones because actually so this is this this way of, of drawing things is like more cute but it's actually not correct because we are not in a continuous situation right uh, we have like discrete points for each one of these trajectories and actually uh, we we start the the new trajectory. The, so the replication step, you copy it until the first point that passes already that kill. So we can assure that all the new set of replicas, it has a level higher than that kill. And the mathematical proof just work with that. This is pretty important. But it, this is natural when you are in a, in, in a discrete situation. Okay. You mentioned you cannot go back, but once you pass that cement, no, you, you can't can go back. Look, my trajectory yeah. get back, but but she gets back, but the level of the trajectory it's is the maximum that I reach it. Mm -hmm. The only thing that can happen is that so this can happen. Uh, so we have a trajectory like this, right? And we kill it at this level, let's say. And you're gonna uh, copy uh, this trajectory here using the first point that passes this level here, right? Because of the fact that we are in a discrete situation, we can copy. We are gonna copy until this point, and this point has this velocity going down. So it can happen that the next one that you're going to to the, 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 the new replica, yeah? it's going to do like just this. It's going to have the same level with this one, but first of all, we're already assured that this level is higher than the one we killed. And the second point is, uh, uh, this can create a situation that we call extinction, that nobody passes, and then the estimation of the probability is zero. This happens, right? This is natural. And this happens generally because you didn't, uh, you don't have like a good uh, reaction coordinate, but it's not that bad because it just makes your variance higher. Actually, we just wrote a paper on that. The, the really interesting point of this method is that it's not, um, how can I say, um, the choice of the reaction coordinate is not a crucial point. You're just gonna have like a higher variance, but it still works. Okay. Ah. So if I understand correctly, you can wait until all n replicas 
finish before setting your film. Before? Before setting your, your film up. You have to wait until everybody finishes. So, so what if I have one replica that takes many, many times longer than the other replicas? It's going to take a lot of time. You're, you're, yeah. So, so do, you, do you need to pull resources for all replicas while this happens? Or is there a is this script to go to? And so, from yeah, so, so, uh, so up to now, uh, so I, I think you're uh, talking about uh, running things in parallel, right? Yes. Okay, up to now, the algorithm is it's completely sequential. The parallelization, so there are two ways to parallelize this uh, that are possible right now. Uh, the first one is that you can parallelize DMD. Right? You can just run with using more cores because you have like a, a bigger system, a big system. And the second point, it's like for the case of dialing, uh, there is like any point of you running the MD in parallel. So I just run AMS simulations in parallel because I have to run uh, a number of AMS simulations. No, I don't just do once. Because every time I'm going to get an estimator, and my final estimator is going to be uh, the average value. And the estimation of the variance also came from that. Because that's the mathematical proof we have. We don't have the proof that every time I'm going to run, I'm going to get the, the, the right uh, probability. The, the, the proof is the expected value. It's going to be the right one. Okay, so but in terms of resources for for each AMS yeah. Do they, do they share it? Do you know no. No. They, 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 they each, uh, ah, if they share, uh, whoa. <laughs> if they share the notes, that's that's what you're asking? I'm, 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 not, I'm not clear how you navigate uh, a good queue with, with this. I think the answer is you're bracketing sequentially and then. Each AMS is run sequentially yeah, okay. yeah. for each AMS, but it will just launch. So my script is going is just going to launch uh, each AMS. We just get, have to say how much cores we have. But uh, yeah, until now, like the common they are going to run is going to be like charm one plus B times the number of cores you want to use to parallelize this MD that you. You're gonna give if you don't give any, or if you put zero, it's just gonna run an MD uh, and the configuration file. Yeah. So up to now, actually, I don't manage like keys, but it's just like a really simple line of code that has uh, the yeah the common. And actually, so all my all my scripts are written in Bash. I don't know if you're uh, uh, user to programming Bash. Are you? That's cool because if you if you want to use uh, the method in uh, a situation where you have like to you have a queue system that's not my case in my lab uh, if you have this you just have to change one line and I can show you what what is the line so that that's simple to do yeah uh, I have two so okay no. first. How many times do you have to run AMS to get a small variance? Oh, ah, that's a good question. So this depends on um, this depends on the uh, uh, the set of initial conditions. So first of all, I'm going to say I don't have uh, a, a final answer for you because the only so we, I tried to so I tried to change all the parameters and not that one. And I have an idea for one point. So you are all going to run like, I think about 100 AMS with uh, 50 replicas. And it's just going to take like uh, four minutes each one if you use uh, a normal, if you, each AMS, AMS is going to take like four minutes if you use like a normal laptop uh, for this system. So this is when you get out from one point. So from one point, you get like lower variance easily. Uh, for the transition time, that you are in a situation where you're gonna, you have to get out from equilibrium, 
the idea is that uh, we saw that um, you have to, so the best idea to, to sample this equilibrium is to change the, the reaction, the, the set of initial conditions at, at each AMS. So all my tests were done like uh, using like a thousand AMS and 500 replicas. But I'm, and, and I, yeah, so that's a lot. And I'm now uh, looking on that. Because it depends also on the, the parameter of the Z mean. So yeah, I'm, I'm doing some tests right now. So this is not going to be in the paper, but yeah. Yeah, my question. I, I know it's few years probably, but I'm not really understand. So initially there are five replicas, and after you set the uh, Z here and and you discard two, and yeah. right now you have three. And after that, after that you, the, so that's that's the like. When I discard two, I'm like in health iteration. To finish the iteration, I have to replicate other two replicas. So like, I'm going to copy two of them that I'm going to choose like randomly. Mm -hmm. And I choose other two. Uh, I copy them until the first point that passes that hill. And then I continue the trajectory from this point. Is that strange for you? Some people ask me why I'm going to get a different trajectory. Is that clear? Why doing this I'm going to get a different trajectory? Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. I can I can come. Yeah. So I'm just going to, so I, I chose this one and this one. This is done like randomly. OK? Uh, but I have to choose other two. One. And I'm going to copy. The, the replica that I got, so I'm just going to copy this part, and at the first point that, that passes that queue, I copy him, and then after that I just run the simulation. And I stop when I enter A or B. So if I'm close to A, generally I'm going to enter A. So. Is that, is that uh, clear? After, and in the end, actually, what are you going to see? Uh, so I have A, B, and B here. In the end, you're going to see this, this branching trajectories like this. Are you, are you changing the seat in the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, of course. Yeah, that's why the trajectory is different. You have the brown emotion, the seat is different, so yeah. I don't know. As we get to we will move forward to the seat queue. Every iteration I get, I use that queue, yeah. 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 And every time I, I'm going to have an estimation of the probability of passing this at Q value conjacent to the fact that you passed the last one. Yeah. So, uh, when you uh, run the number of replicas and you say halfway through with the reaction board, you run the replicas until they either reach the area of A or the area of B. Yeah. Yeah. I, every every time, like all the trajectories I, I have, they all finish in A or in B, and I actually stop the algorithm when the Z Q level passes Z max. That that's when I stop. So if, if you if you're interested, and if you download the tutorial, I have like this uh, uh, how you say workflow, but flowchart. Yeah, you have. I have that this, this flow chart that explains with words uh, every part of it, just exactly what I showed here, but without the drop. I think that's 